It's okay. And uh, so the idea is to have a kind of discussion about uh, what uh, the state of the art and challenges being the uh, digital twin for the water cycle. This video is very nice. It looks like that we are already there and doing a, a lot of things. <coughs> we have done uh, some, something, of course, because we have been working on that for the last uh, two, three years, but even more probably. And uh, we are, for instance, we have developed something for the Mediterranean, but I will show you something more later. And, uh, but let's start with the, <coughs> with the first question. I, I don't know if you know Slido, I think so. The first question, and uh, I would like that you try to, to give your reply. And the question is, building a high resolution replica of the terrestrial water cycle, is it feasible or not? What do you think? So, one kilometer or less of the terrestrial water cycle. In hydrology, one kilometer is already high resolution. <clears throat> and uh, let's wait a, a while for uh, getting your feedbacks. You can either scan the QR code or go into slider.com and write the code OEMCDT. You can do also online if somebody is online, I don't know. <clears throat> we are uh, more or less four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, twelve people. Somebody applied. No. Oh, that's the, the, the that's the correct answer. And uh, <clears throat> well, that's also my feeling now. And uh, ciao, Giacomo. <laughs> and uh, let's start with uh, what I want to show you. Okay. So this is Destination Earth. Everybody, you have already heard about the Destination Earth. We have this initiative from the European Commission, ESA, UMETSAT Plus, ECNWF. They will uh, basically build a high through high performance computing and storage. They will build a replica of our health system, everything, not only the rest of water cycle at a resolution global scale. And this is what actually uh, basically we expect from this initiative. We don't know actually when, but probably they, there are some time plan in this. If you go to Destination Earth, but uh, the time plan is quite short to me. <clears throat> but uh, let's see. You have also you can see also in the uh, a video on YouTube, and there are really there is uh, a lot of material already out, and there are, they have already started to do uh, activities related to climate adaptation and uh, extreme events. But where we are now in terms of uh, our capability to meet to cope with extreme events, everybody. You all know probably Storm Daniel that happened at the last month in, uh, in Greece and then in uh, Libya. Actually, this is something like uh, completely an event that, at least in terms of precipitation, is something that uh, never happened before. It was kind of uh, 1,000 millimeter in a couple of days for some location in Greece. We have uh, 1,000 uh, square kilometer of flooded area. If you see the image, it's really amazing. And then, of course, the, the, the event goes down and hit Libya with uh, a lot of damages. And the number of casualties is still probably not known. But more than 10,000 casualties for a flood event is really a, a huge number. We have written, for instance, uh, we have just written a, a paper to actually highlight the fragility of the Mediterranean climate. And actually, if you want to monitor and to model and to forecast and to give uh, information at a high resolution, we should be able also to, to track and to forecast these kind of events. This is at very high resolution events. But then when you go, for instance, at, uh, we <clears throat> some, some activities around the water cycle is drought monitoring. Drought monitoring to satellites on most is quite well established, or to modeling. And so we could expect that uh, we are almost there in understanding, uh, for instance, what is the drought condition or what is the trend in, uh, in Sol Mosto for the last uh, 10 or 20 years. 
we are doing these activities uh, within the project uh, OEMC, but also with, in, uh, within other projects. But for instance, in the top left, you can see a trend map of uh, Sven Mostu. <clears throat> On the left, modeling and uh, integrated with satellites. And uh, then here we have IGA 5. And you can see that the maps, they have not the same color. Sometimes it's uh, wet in terms, and the other one is dry in trend. If you look at GRACE, GRACE measuring the terrestrial water storage for, uh, for the full domain, drying everywhere. If you look at uh, the comparison between IGA 5 and the terrestrial water storage, it's very good up to 2013, 14, but then something happens. <clears throat> and actually, we don't know, actually, for instance, the drying trend of the terrestrial water storage is, is very strong in the last 10 years. And the question is, is it a signal? Is it a problem of the satellite? Is it a question related to temporary solution? Is it because actually the model is seeing something different with respect to the, to the satellite data? That's a really open question, and we don't, I don't have an answer for that. <clears throat> but this is something that actually, if we want to really build a replica of our health, we should understand all these things. We should not simply see what is happening into the river, but we should know also know what is happening under the soil and also in the groundwater, so we, have, we should have all this information. And still is, yeah, this is a simple analysis you can do by yourself and you can really see that something uh, has to be investigated there. What we have done, we have done this uh, digital twin hydrology project that uh, basically it's, it was a project with ESA. Of course, it's a project uh, with a number of partners. UGAC is also one of the partners, for instance. We also presented to the Advanced Committee for Earth Observation in ESA. There is a lot of activities around there. And uh, what we have done is to try to develop a prototype of a digital twin, first for the Po River Basin, Northern Italy, and then for the full Mediterranean Basin. <clears throat> Why we have been able to do something like this? Because, for instance, we have now Sentinel-1. Sentinel-1 is able to provide uh, high resolution soil moisture data at uh, high resolution means one kilometer in this context. And so, for instance, here you can see two maps of high resolution soil moisture based on Sentinel-1 data for June 2020 and 2022. Last year in Italy, the problem of drought was very strong. And you can see that with the high resolution data, you can really see what's happening at very high with very high granularity of the, of the data. So you can see, for instance, what is happening in, uh, in Milan with respect to Turing that is not possible before with the 20 kilometer resolution data. This is for Sun Mosto. We have done something also for satellite precipitation. I will go fast for that. Something new that we are going to develop, we have already developed it uh, from satellite. You can see <coughs> something related to the impact of the human on the water cycle. This is irrigation water use. These are uh, data sets that we have published on uh, Zenoto, one kilometer resolution data sets at uh, weekly or be weekly scale that provides information about uh, the irrigation water use. Irrigation water use is completely unknown because first the, the people don't want to share the data because it's a, it's a sensible data. You have to pay for water and uh, <clears throat> there is a lot of, there are a lot of issues related to, for instance, illegal uh, uh, withdrawal of water from river, and uh, and it's also a, a problem even if you have technical stuff for uh, for measuring irrigation. It's a, it's a, it's a difficult task. With satellite now we can do we can start having some information about that. We have done activities for the Po basin, for the Ebro basin that are highly irrigated in uh, Europe and then also in Australia. But in principle now we are going also to make this kind of things in principle for the whole Europe and then also for the long term. But uh, that's and ongoing activities. <clears throat> so we have now earth observation data that can facilitate the development of a digital twin. That's. We have done also not only digital twin for the full Mediterranean, but uh, for instance, we have done another project that is called digital twin for the Alps, that is basically targeting only the Alps. <clears throat> Why you have to make, a, of course, the Alps are within the Mediterranean basin. So we have two, mo two projects with ESA, everybody ESA is funding two projects. One only for the Alps and the other one for the full Mediterranean. Why? Because actually the problem that we are facing over the Alps are very, very high resolution. For instance, on the bottom left, you can see a high resolution flood mapping that we have done for a small basin not far from here. And uh, but the resolution of that map is uh, one, one meter resolution for the flooded area. And uh, for running that map, you have to run hydrological models plus high resolution hydraulic model. We need a lot of information about the, the, the geometry. 
it's a very hard stuff. And if you think to do these kind of things for, I don't know, even at uh, national scale, it's a, it's a kind of a nightmare. <clears throat> what we are doing is also providing the data. This is uh, a, a platform that in which basically for, uh, ex for downloading and for providing the data is uh, probably the best solution that we have found so far. Is uh, on the top you can see the link, but then later also we can also do we can also go to the platform because I have also other another platform that I would like to show you. But uh, here it's very easy to you can see you can have uh, you can access the what we have called the hydrology DT hydrology data cube. We can we have put there data for some moisture evaporation precipitation and snow water equivalent and you can really easily access the data extracting data for a, for a for a point for a grid or you can even uh, access to the lab and then working with the uh, Jupyter notebook to to make your own uh, analysis uh, with the data and so you don't have of course to to download all the data similar to what we have seen for instance for uh, Sentinel-1 and Sentinel-2 data in Sentinel-2 mostly data and Landsat data. But now we are doing this kind of things also for these uh, uh, new products that are high resolution. But, uh, you know, as, uh, as for Sentinel-2, we need the, <clears throat> most of the people don't want to, to have the, the whole Mediterranean data. They just want the data for, I don't know, uh, small area that can be 10 by 10 kilometer. And so with this platform, it's very easy to, to work with the data and extract the data. So for instance, here you can see so most of them precipitation time series. I'm happy because with this uh, uh, platform, I'm really able to visualize the data because otherwise you, ne you never visualize the data. And here you, you put on the points and you suddenly see the time series. And for instance, you can see also if there is consistency between some most and precipitation. So you can also have a, an assessment of the, of the quality of the data that you have shown. You can see maps, so for instance, sometimes we have some artifacts and uh, with this platform you can really visualize and uh, analyze the data very very quickly we have a paper that will be published soon with all the things that we are going to <clears throat> to discuss we have a lot of activities around that it's not only paper we have a video at the beginning that will be shown also by isa we have web article actually there is a lot of rumors around that but i want to show you <clears throat> So actually, it seems that we are already there. We have done a lot of things. We are very good. We did also very nice visualization tools and blah, blah, blah. But the problem is that the reality versus modeling and versus set observation typically sometimes give you some, um, uh, some surprise. We have already seen something about, for instance, drought modeling, uh, drought monitoring in Europe and uh, <clears throat> high resolution. High resolution, there is a kind of uh, trend in the in the recent years everybody is developing now a high resolution product if you if you don't develop an high resolution product you are nobody and for instance for Sermosto, just this year we have uh, I just make a kind of very quick analysis of literature and there are four global one kilometer daily seamless data sets of surface and most and uh, similar for uh, precipitation, meteorological data. One meteorological data set is also, for instance, developed under this uh, under OEMC project. Evaporation and blah, blah, blah. So everybody is doing this kind of. So actually, now we have much more data than what we are able to, to investigate. First, second, which data set to use or which not to use. That's, that, that's really one of the problems, how to navigate between among all these products. And if you look at the data, sometimes you look something like this. This is an anomaly map for the monthly time scale for the same uh, month in uh, April 2020. On the left and on the right, there are two products that are supposed to be one kilometer resolution. You can see that uh, there are the same months. The overall pattern can be more or less similar, but that here there are some artifacts, but a part of the artifacts, you can see that the resolution of the map on the right is not one kilometer. Or either this one is not one kilometer, either that one is noisy. But this happens <clears throat> many times. You can see these kind of things. You can see this is for soil moisture. I have example for evaporation, for because most of the time this product is downscaling or is using also coarse resolution data and so that they are sell they are sold they are you, <clears throat> they told you that the products at one kilometer but it's not but you can even have data sets at 30 meter resolution for soil moisture very nice map you can see river topography and whatever 
But uh, how to get 30 meter resolutions on most of these really, I don't know. But we have data sets. If you get go online, you can find this kind of data sets. <clears throat> and so what is the real and actual resolution of the data? And the same for the modeling. For the modeling, I don't have slides, but for the modeling, typically you have model that is one kilometer, but then the forcing is one, 100 kilometer. They are using, I don't know, meteorological data from MIGA 5 or uh, at 50 kilometer. And then they say, okay, this model is uh, 30 meters simply because they have kind of them or digital elevation model run for 30 meter resolution. But if the forcing is for 100 kilometer or even more, we have a problem. And so there is a problem of consistency and of, of the integration between earth observation, modeling, and also in situ observation. Another problem of consistency. So for instance, this is what we are doing in uh, these are different uh, satellite products, uh, vegetation, precipitation, river discharge. These products are more or less based on a single satellite product. But then for developing, uh, we are, we are able to develop some products. So for instance, we can develop some most of, more or less precipitation, radiation, land surface temperature, evaporation from only Sentinel-2, more or less. But some of the products actually are developed through other modeling. And so for instance, if we want to develop uh, evapotranspiration uh, with the GLIM approach, we are using a lot of modeling there. Snow melt, it's a lot of modeling there. Interception, the same. Precipitation, you can do only but with only satellites, but also with modeling. The rest of water storage can be really uh, uh, either from, either you have a 100 kilometer, 300 kilometer resolution, either you have, if you want high resolution, it's really modeling product. And so the end, there is a lot of interaction between them. So a lot of interaction means that, for instance, if I use a model, a product for evaporation that is using already a model, and then I put this product into the model, to improve the model, we are, I'm, we are doing something wrong. And we have plenty of papers doing these kind of things. Plenty of papers saying that they are using uh, satellite precipitation, but actually this is not only satellites, it's satellite plus in situ, and they make the comparison with in situ data and it works. <laughs> But that's not but why it happens, because actually the number of products that is out is huge. And uh, I don't have, I don't, I don't, of course, if I do a kind of, I don't know, modeling, I don't have to have the expertise for all the things. I should probably, but uh, sometimes it happens that we have problems. And then the new water cycle. This is the water cycle picture that we like when we, I don't know, at the secondary, at the second class of primary school, I do this, I have this uh, slide very natural landscape, but now USGS and also ESA basically did the new picture. And what is highlighted here in this picture is the, uh, what the, 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 the blue, the light blue uh, boxes. I don't know if you're able to see, but basically they, are, <clears throat> they uh, highlight the domestic, industrial and agricultural water uses. Because actually we are basically, we as human, we are changing the water cycle a lot. And if you want to model the water cycle at high resolution, one kilometer, 20 kilometer resolution, everything can be in a, in a single pixel. But high resolution, one kilometer, actually, you have to, you have to, 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 to consider all this stuff. Reservoir, water diversion, and, and blah, blah, blah. So for instance, this is a question that, uh, again, for you, how many large dam do we have in the world? This is a quiz, so we will have also a winner without a prize. Natural dams. Okay, <laughs> dams is the yeah, it's the barrier of the river. Ah no no no, it's uh, artificial dams made by us to manage water. And uh, why I put this question? Because actually, <clears throat> the answer is it can be uh, quite strange, or at least not expected. But actually, it will tell us how much we are really looking, uh, or we are really <clears throat> modifying the water cycle. And uh, something mm -hmm. more, for instance, for just for the Po River Basin, that is 70,000 square kilometers, it's uh, more than 200. Uh, Dams. Let's see. I wait just a bit more, but we have nine participants. Nah, let's do. Seventy-eight percent, sixty thousand. Correct answer. Good. 
And we have also a winner. The winner is Daniele. Daniele, you are. Huh? Well, you won nothing, but <coughs> at least you are happy for uh, just a couple of seconds. And uh, you won because you, you, you beat your boss because he, he was slower. It's not my job. Okay, why don't work in the scene? No. Okay. I told that. Okay. It was even better, no? It was, it was like this. And uh, so, for instance, what we have done, uh, yeah, you know, you have discussed it together. Also, there is a presentation this morning of Destination Earth uh, of the DESP uh, activities done by ESA. And actually, they want this uh, platform, this the data that Destination Earth should develop should be available and should be understandable for everybody. What we have done in this uh, Digital Twin Earth program project, we have done this platform. You can access it, you can go there and you can play around with that. I, will, I don't know, probably we can go there later if you have time, but I don't know. And what we have done here is we have high resolution sun master data, precipitation data, modeling. We put all together, we built a database, and uh, we have been able to develop a database of flood events. And so very simple, you can go to the platform, you can, what are the two main drivers of a flood? Initial sun master and the amount of precipitation. You can put these two numbers in the boxes uh, on the on the uh, here, and uh, changing the two numbers, you, you can see the changing of the floods for different points of the river. So this is very simple. If you show also to people not knowing anything about floods hydrology, actually it's very simple to understand. You can under, you can assess what is the what is the role of soil most with respect to precipitation? What can be the, the highest flood events? So, for instance, if we overcome 10,000 uh, square kilometer, no, see square kilometer, 10,000 cubic meter per second, we have uh, flooding. So, for instance, the dots start to become red, and so we have an assessment of what can be the the, the importance of uh, of floods and uh, of the main driver of floods. But for building this, this is a workflow. I don't. I will. I, 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 Nobody understands workflow done by other, particularly for precipitation. So you don't have to understand the, the workflow, but you should understand that, for instance, each box here is, for instance, this is the precipitation product, evaporation product, and master product, flooded area. Each box is developed by one of the partners. So there is a team behind this. And to develop this flood risk tool, we have put all the data. Then we have a snow melting, <coughs> soil water balance, these are all the processes that we have to, uh, to model. We have to model groundwater, to then to have runoff, surface and subsurface runoff. We have to put water into the river that goes, it becomes river discharge. And then if you have flooding, and so we have flooded area, and at the end we have an assessment of flood risk. And uh, this is a complex system with many people, and actually many people working, and actually many things can be changed. You can change, I don't know, a percolation, the soil water balance model and the results would change. And actually it should be accessible by everybody. And if you will consider water resource management is even more complex. And this is just for the poor river basin, 70,000 square kilometer, one application, a flood risk or water resource management. So just water, we are uh, not considering, for instance, carbon cycle, uh, the energy cycle we are considering very little. So just for that, it's already a very complex task. And for instance, in the platform, we have another, uh, because we have a platform I will show you later, uh, we have different bottoms, and with some of the bottoms you can, for instance, investigate, uh, in this case, what is scenario for water resource management. So for instance, here, <clears throat> another question, probably the last one, no, probably yes, no, or oh yes, I don't know. Probably have it two other two. And so the problem here is, uh, you are a stakeholder. In Italy, we have a problem. We have drought problem. Last year, we had the, the most severe drought in northern Italy on the last 20, 200 years. There is a paper out of that. And uh, so if you are in uh, the beginning of the summer time, you have to manage water. And so what you need to know to, manage, to, to best manage uh, water resources. And so for this, uh, in this uh, pool, you can, you can select which one of these variable is, uh, is more important or simply do, do a ranking. So it's more important snow water and the initial snow water in its soil must or it's more important that you know what, it going, what will be the precipitation for the next three months 
or what is be the hair temperature that basically is a proxy of how much water will evaporate. And uh, so for, and for instance, one of the main question is, is more important the initial condition or the forecast? Initial condition can be known now from satellite data. And uh, most of the time they are not used in practical application. And uh, if initial conditions start to play a role, actually you put some, uh, some value to that. Actually now with satellite data, we can improve our, cap our capability to best uh, to manage water resources because seasonal forecast of precipitation and air temperature, we all know that it's, uh, it's very uncertain because knowing what is going to happen in the next three months is quite, uh, is quite difficult to know. And uh, no, oh, it doesn't stop. I promise that we have done a platform that is like this. No, it's not here. <clears throat> so we have a platform that is like this, that you have here a, a, a slider, a button, and uh, you can select from very low to very high this is precipitation temperature, and then in these are initial conditions for soil moisture and snow. And changing the different uh, button, you can have uh, information about what is going to happen in the next uh, summer, in terms of fluxes, in terms of uh, storages, and particularly in terms of water uses. And this is very important, probably, is in terms of the deficit that we can have. So, for instance, for this uh, default condition, we can have a deficit. Uh, here, that is uh, 3.4 uh, cubic kilometer, and uh, that is around the total amount of water used is around 50 to 20 cubic kilometers, so 3 is around 50%. And, uh, and so the question here to also to try to, <clears throat> to answer to, the, um, to what is the rank of the different variable below, before, and uh, so supposed to be at the, at the beginning of the summer time, and you assume that we have very initial snow, like this year, we have very initial snow. And uh, we have uh, supposed to have high, high, high temperature, that is probably always, all, yeah, actually, <clears throat> 25 degrees, 5th of October is really very high. And so the, the, the question is, what is the worst condition? So if it's, uh, it's worse to have, I don't know, very low precipitation and high soil moisture, very low soil moisture and high precipitation. So in terms of soil moisture and precipitation, what will be the worst condition? So you have to select one of them. And uh, the idea is to, have the, to, to select the one that provides the worst condition in terms of uh, water availability for the next summer. And it, it will give you an idea about the role of soil moisture and precipitation, again, as we have seen before for the flood risk, but in this case for water resource management. We have six answers, 12 participating. I made this kind of question because actually I, I, I get surprised myself too. So we have done uh, the modeling, uh, we have done uh, the, uh, we have put the data in the model, uh, we have used a lot of high resolution data from satellite, the products that I've shown before. And uh, when I see the results of the modeling, you get surprised. You don't expect something. And uh, so actually the, the, the point to me is that really there is uh, still a lot of things to be, to be understood. We have 12 participants and just 10 answers. Somebody is missing. Giacomo is trying to get to read the, 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 the four. <laughs> but let's go. Low soil moisture and low precipitation is the most, uh, is the question that is uh, probably <clears throat> for about 10 people. The correct answer is, very low soil moisture and average precipitation. So basically, so very low soil moisture and soil moisture, if it is very low, it's even worse to have uh, average precipitation sense instead of uh, low precipitation. The winner is Jacopo with, uh, with the E. Jacopo should be with J, but I don't know who is Jacopo. Who is Jacopo? Bravo. <laughs> and uh, 
And if you go to the platform, you can uh, play around with these uh, buttons. And uh, so this is the, these are the three was configuration. It's not really, the difference is not so much, but uh, still we have a deficit higher in this configuration with respect to this one. And so this platform is to me, actually I've shown also to stakeholders, to people also to non expert and uh, this, this should be probably the, 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 the way forward actually to, to show the impact and the, the use of, of the data that we are uh, providing, not just to show some beautiful maps of, I don't know, high resolution map, but this is really actual information that you can use for uh, water management. Last slide, in which I summarize here the, the three main challenges that I believe are uh, the main challenge that we have now, resolution and sampling of the data. Resolution and sampling is not the same things. And consistency between the modeling and the observation, the complexity of the system, particularly the human impact. Here we have a list of the tool that I have shown here for the data visualization, for the what is scenario. We have, we have a tool also for uh, investigating uh, drought throughout Mediterranean basin and the platform of DT Alps. Here is the, <laughs> actually uh, two years, two days ago, uh, no, yesterday I told to my colleagues, okay, if you, have, if you don't have a platform, you are nobody here because everybody has an, his own platform. And then I understood that myself that in my presentation, I have shown three platforms, but I, I didn't develop any, any of them. I am simply part of the, of the game. And uh, now I hope that we have time because I could 20 for 20, so 10 minutes, but just five because we need five, five minutes to change. So now actually the, 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 this presentation and what I've shown, I can go also online to show you something, but we can, you can do also later. And, uh, but my, my main purpose here is to actually get your suggestion or get your comments or get your ideas about this question, what is the state of the heart? What are the challenges? If you see any other challenges, if you see some solution somewhere. The mic. Oh, okay. Since you already mentioned the issue with the platforms, I think one of the key issues that we have also discussed during the Eurogeo meeting already regarding all of this and specifically on the concept of the digital twins is indeed the number of platforms and their, and their interoperability. So maybe also a question for you for these three, how much have you already aligned the interface? I know maybe it's not the right question to ask directly to you because probably I should speak to Simone from Meo or someone else, uh, but uh, Still, uh, I think it's an important aspect to take into account that all of these nice results are also linkable and, and combinable from the different resources. I think that's one of the key issues for me in this whole digital twin world right now, that all the different things happening in different ESA activities, different DTEs are not using the same infrastructure. A destination Earth has their complete own ideas. That's definitely one key aspect. The other one is definitely also what you also have shown in your presentations, uh, resolution is not resolution. So you need to really know what you do with your data when you start combining them from different resources. That's uh, a big problem actually, because a lot of people are just, because it's mathematically possible, combine things does not mean it makes sense to combine them in this way. So I think that's also one of the big issues. Uh, and uh, there we need certainly also some more consistent tracing of uncertainty of all the different uh, data sets that go into these platforms. Yeah, I, I agree with the, yeah, I should probably add the uh, technology, because it's technological issue to me that I don't want, I, I, mean, I, I would like to, to remain a scientist and not to, to deal with the technological issues. But for instance, the three platform here, one of them is because it's another project. One of them is because it's mostly for uh, showcasing what we have done in a simple way. And I like, I, I, I really like this kind of things that is different, that is completely different from the platform from, uh, for the data visualization and download. And for instance, if you try to make uh, visualization and download in the first platform, if you want a time series, you, you can stay there for, uh, for a while. If you do it in, uh, in the third, it's much better. So actually also having single platform for everything is probably impossible. And so that's, of course, everything should be 
uh, linkable, uh, integrated, but of course also from the technological with, point of view. With this I fully agree. I, I'm not saying that you need to put everything in one platform. I'm just saying you need to have the interfaces so that they can talk to each other and can benefit from each other. And maybe also from protection, protecting our resources, trying not because you have three different platforms, three times store the same data also. Maybe you can yes. have one data store and, and feed them and create different views on the data for, for example, different stakeholders, different type of users and so on. I think this is perfectly fine. I don't think that they all need to have the exact same user interface or the same front end and so on, but at least on the back end side, it would be good that you minimize the number of times that you need to store your results and, and process them and so on. On the backend, I, I completely agree. Sometimes, but sometimes it's better to have uh, some data in the platform already processed, and so that's why. But actually, I believe that really <clears throat> the data for everybody is not is not is, is not the solution. Actually, everybody probably have his own use of the data, and uh, to have. What we know, what we typically want as a user is that you click and you, have, you see what you want to see. If you have to wait, it's a problem, and uh, so that's why probably there is this kind of uh, explosion of a number of. But of course, from the technological, technological point of view, I believe that some solution will be there. Giacomo, I don't want to talk too much. Yeah, uh, it's also in the same direction. Let's say my question is, how to be most inclusive? as possible, especially for the modeler point of view. Let's say, for example, I am a logical modeler, I'm doing my beautiful model in my research area in which maybe there are special features in my research area able to model the snow in a super good way, but other process not so well. I would like to integrate somehow my results or my modeling in a larger chain, like in some digital art system but there are a lot of technological barriers to integrate for one side and there are other proprietary bar barriers because especially we hydrologists we know we are very possessive about our model every hydrology thinks his model is the best and the other are shit so how to overcome those things because i think the problem is that sometimes let's say you are many models we are very good in doing what do you want things but not so good in doing the other things and we will be able to integrate those things in a overall platform maybe we have Many truth, but combining different truth, maybe you have a better picture of the reality. I fully agree. The, 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 the dream will be that this kind of system should be completely open and everybody can interact. There are a lot of technological barriers and issues to have everybody interacting with them. But the point is that actually the current way of addressing the problem is one centralized modeling engine that probably will bring uh, to loose all the expert styles developed by all the people working in, 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 in these topics. And this is a problem. And it's not just a problem of uh, doing a better modeling of some of the components. It's really the problem to have uh, people who can contribute, giving them the possibility to contribute. But this is a dream. Actually, this is not in my challenges because simply this is for me, it's, it's a bit lo lo longer from it's a bit it's far from now. But that's kind. Of, that's of course something that we should achieve. I don't. I know that some people are already discussing about that also in the in the context of this twin. And uh, yeah, also from the modeling perspective, and also for the dream should be that you have a system in which everybody can contribute in terms of modeling, in terms of observation, reproducible. You can click, run quickly without many problems because you don't have to know everything. And you can have different results, and then you can compare with the same platform. That's that's. But it's not there anymore. I, I don't I don't see anything about that seminar. Just a couple of papers. Yeah, I have two comments. It works. Works okay. Yes. So yes. one technical because we ingested the data. So I think to be most inclusive, I know that everyone has platforms and interfaces. What we always try to advocate is to have data publicly available in a common format, cloud optimized uh, on S3 object storage open. Because um, I think that that would be the, 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 the option with the least barriers. And we, <clears throat> we in the end ingested the data. We did not use any of these interfaces uh, of these platforms. We didn't even look for them because the experience with 
interfaces and services that you they are more complicated you have to register you need some tokens you have to to connect um, maybe typically performance is much worse than the data um, simply on object storage the servers have to run um, maybe there are some queues all these kind of issues you have with with services um, you may argue that data on s3 is also a service um, but a very robust one and, and typically a scalable one if you have uh, the data on on commercial clouds or, or well, well run uh, cloud infrastructure. And if these data would all adhere to common standards, I think everyone could build on top of whatever you like. Um, your, inter, your your applications and these very specific ones, like what you did, um, I don't want to, to connect to this uh, platform and the interfaces for doing or, or ingesting exactly this kind of workflow. I just want maybe the underlying data and then and see if we can do similar things. Um, the other thing is, is scientific, and that's quite interesting because I'm not at all from hydrology. I, I come from marine science, but I'm, I was I used to be a model as well, and I've seen these kind of diagrams and in, in ecosystem models, um, these end-to-end -end models, and that was a quite a fashion, I think, in the late 80s uh, with hundreds of state variables and thousands of parameters. And basically, one of the, the conclusions was that given the uncertainties in the inputs and parameters, um, if you do a proper sensitivity analysis, and, and this is error propagation basically from, from your physics undergrad stu studies, um, the result that comes out of these very complex things, as, as long as you cannot constrain everything, um, is it's hard to use because, as you said, you can change in any of these boxes, you can change some parameters and it will have some impact on your um, same, same for hydrology, same for so everything, same for meteorology, it's, and it's 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 model theory, if you like. And then they are of course very prone to overfitting because if you then have some in situ uh, independent measurements and you want to fit this uh, with this model of of this uh, with these many degrees of freedom, you will probably succeed. And then you say we have a great model, but then if you do forecasting, you will fail because you overfit it. You can succeed for the wrong reason, right? It, yeah, but with forecasting, you will probably fail. Um, with, with with reproducing stuff that you've seen and measured, uh, particularly if you have sparse measurements, then you will be great. And then forecasting and understanding of what you're doing, it will be very hard. Um, but that's a general model paradigm, so a, a problem. So if you have a too simple model, then you're too simple. If it's too complex, you can do anything but not forecast. Quick answer, because actually I probably we have to switch to the other session. But yeah, uh, indeed, into the uh, in, into this project, we have two modeling systems, one very complex distributed uh, high resolution providing high resolution data, but it's a bit, uh, you can't manage too much. And the other model that we have used for the what if scenario is more flexible. And so that's also the problem. The point actually you have to, you should have different models for different purposes and uh, you need a flexible model for doing something uh, that a, a spatially distributed model working at a national scale is impossible to, to, to tune the parameter or to change something easily. At least the running time is is long, and so that's 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 something that should be managed. And for the data, I agree. Probably it should be something like uh, the best technological uh, <clears throat> way of accessing the data, but then the the interface can be everywhere. Everybody can build his own interface, depending also. Also, because if you go to three different stakeholders in the same region in Italy, they want three different uh, interfaces because they have their own view of what they want. So that's the normal. So I probably I stop here. I know, I know that there are other two person raising the hand, but I, I have to move to the next. Okay. You can. Do you have a question? The idea now is that actually we are going to develop this kind of things now extending for the whole Europe. And the idea is that uh, everything is uh, everything that I that I do is open, and uh, the modeling is open. Everything is open, and uh, the problem could be it's not really the the, the 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 tools are there, but the expertise for uh, integrating tools and it's. It's, we are still at the very beginning. We have high resolution data for uh, most of the variables that I've shown here just for the last three years, from since three to four years. So 
for most of the data, we have no idea about the accuracy of the data. One kilometer stone mosque and evaporation, uh, or even 100 meter resolution evaporation, you don't, you don't have station data, you don't have in situ data that can, that we can understand the accuracy of the data. So then when you want to use this, mod, this data into the model, we don't know how, we don't have uncertainty. Of course, the dream should be to have an assessment of the error, but it's a, it's a problem. And then there are a lot of problems related to this data, particularly over, uh, uh, in, in areas in which the human, the human impact is important. And uh, so we are still at the beginning. And so for me, we are still at the beginning. So before we will have some uh, meaningful results, probably 20 years. And Europe tell us three, four years. But probably I'm not, uh, I'm pessimistic. Typically I'm optimistic, but I don't know. That's, that's what I see, but I don't know. Uh, yeah, I have one question regarding, so you, you presented like a use case on the pop lane, and did you have a chance to talk to someone from the Autorita di Bacino del Po, and yeah, of course, if you have talk, feedbacks from them, what are these feedbacks? We talked with a lot of stakeholders, so just for the, north, <laughs> for the northern Italy part, we talked with kind of uh, 10 different stakeholders, because there are different regions, and also in the different regions we have different uh, authorities, the ones for the uh, Po Basin, the one for the Po Basin, we have two, because they are, we have the one for the flats and the one for the management. And uh, the main output of, the, of, this, of all this uh, interview with them is that uh, they are not really interested to the modeling, because actually, at least in Italy they have the modeling, but there are new variables like soil moisture and evaporation that they are not considering. The snow over the Alps is, uh, now we have over the Alps kind of uh, four to five products from different groups. And uh, something that we sh must do is to make a kind of intercomparison between them and to understand the value and or at least to have uh, everything, if all of them are useful, are good, that's fine, but actually we need uh, some, and that's something that they are, they are asking for. And now with the, uh, yeah, you know, with the national funding from the National Resilience Plan, they are also trying to make something. And yeah, let's see. I have just a small question. It's not but a- I'm, 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 I'm grabbing, I'm, uh, they, they have to make the- you allow. Okay, last question. Okay. Actually, I'm here and I'm happy to answer to everything and also I'm happy to discuss and I'm happy to have your, your vision about this kind of complex things. So that's, yeah. Indeed, we have already discussed, I mean, the problems, challenges and all the things and already I have uh, the discusses. As you have already in your last slide mentioned, the three main critical challenges that we have are facing in this digital twin. I will just discuss, uh, need to discuss about the last challenge about the human impacts and how according to your current experience in the next couple of years, what would you suggest? Is there any a plan going on project in order to tackle that, especially for the third one? Yes, the complexity, physical processes and human effects. Uh, is there any like project is uh, plan is continue to fix this one? Yeah, well, ISA but, is launching this digital twin earth program. In this digital twin earth program, the hmm. hydrology and the hydro hazard they call it like this. Hmm. It's one of the hate topic. So there will be uh, uh, funding from them. I will. I will try to apply and then let's see. And uh, but it's not only for MISA because there is also national digital twins and there are a lot of initiatives. And uh, actually, these three challenges, I think that they are the the ones that in a, in a range of two three years can be at least we can have <clears throat> more understanding on where we are. Something that we have uh, for the something highlighted by Giacomo about the, the, the open modeling. Uh, it's something that probably will need more time. And also the technological part that I'm like completely out of that. That can be something that can be done in, in I think that the technology is it's there. I see many things that people are doing, it's fantastic. But actually we have to, 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 to just, it simply seems to me a kind of just organization, but of course organizing many, many, many people is not simple, so that's, but the technology is there for making these kind of things uh, interoperable, uh, all the all the fair, uh, in the frame framework, and uh, that's it. At least that's my view. Eh? 
Thank you very much to everybody for coming. Uh, I'm here just for other question and uh, also the platform, if you want to shoot to see them, it's uh, something that can be useful also for, uh, I don't know, if you have other activities related to hydrology, there are nice tools also for, you can use for training because they're there. And uh, thank you very much for coming. Thank you.